What's cracking everybody, Zerifaros here, bringing you some Pokemon Go battling content. And you know what? Today's video, I was thinking about, I was thinking about getting stoned, but I decided not to. Figured we'd all rock and roll together. And there's not a bolder pick in the Retro Cup that I could think of than Shadow Lolan Graveler. Shoutouts to fellow trainer and friend of mine, Sotiti, for submitting these battles with the Shadow Lolan Graveler. Really, really cool looking pick. And, you know, some of us just aren't quite lucky to have one of these, and I'm definitely not jealous at all but let's take a look at these battles see how good shadow low and graveler is in the retro cup and let's get into the first battle here we that was not the music that was supposed to play this thing is messed up we've got frostless on the lead versus lantern this is not a great lead but it's also not one that Graveler really cares for because of those surfs so we're gonna see the shadow but look this is so clean look at how he goes in that oh my goodness it's just so visually pleasing. Anyway, Shadow Ball is going to land on this Lantern. Lantern is going to fire back with a Surf, knowing that it just needs two Surfs to KO. Looks to catch a Surf of, the, of uh, the opponent's Lantern on his Lantern. Casually just says, I'm just going to swap this in and get it. And we're going to draw out the Altaria, which is really good because this is going to allow Frostglass to hopefully farm down. He just He's just so smooth with his fingers, dude. I'm... This is visually pleasing. This shoutcast is no longer about a lone gravel where it's about the the swiping etiquette of this of this trainer. <laughs> Moonblast is gonna take out Lantern, and Frostlash should hopefully be able to come in and get a fairly decent amount of farm here. Now, I don't hate coming in with the graveler no definitely gonna fire off the uh avalanche he's probably keeping much better count of the energy than I am. Avalanche is gonna take out that Altaria, and we're just gonna hope. Just gonna hope that the Graveler goes unopposed in the back. Now, his his entire strategy here is to use Graveler as the safe swap to lure out any potential grass types sitting in the back. That's a Frostlast. Do you know what Frostlast doesn't like? Rocks. Do you know what this Graveler's got nothing but? Rocks. Shield 1, gone. Shield 2, about to be gone. With one shield, Graveler severely outpaces this thing. And I'd bet you from Shadow Low and Graveler, these Rock Blasts are going to be enough to KO this Frostlass. And I'm pretty sure Graveler wins CMP as well. So, we're going to see a shield come up from the Frostlass. Immediately going to go for the Rock Blast, because if he doesn't, he's going to get KO'd. And where's my button? You know what? You can take it. Frostlats get dunked on. Lantern's gonna come in and has to go for a surf right away in order to even think about winning this game. But the Graveler comes in and gets to keep going and takes out the Lantern, and that's gonna be a good first game. Well played. Oh goodness, this is gonna be good. I better see. I better see some one shots. So TD, I gotta see them. All right, this is really nasty of a lead here. I'm surprised we stay in here. I think it's because we uh, outpace with the Avalanche. But anyway, just going to suave swipe that screen. Avalanche is going to get the first shield as the opponent fears for their life with a Shadow Ball possibly looming on the horizon. And they're going to throw a bait as well. Dark Pulse, no reason for them not to bait here. But going to be able to get to the Shadow Ball once again right before they're going to get to the next Dark Pulse. Definitely... Really good matchup for Frost, at least in the ones, but in the twos, we're going to get Shadow Claw down. So he decides to make a swap into the Lantern to catch this Shadow Ball, save a little bit of the Frost last for later. Don't really expect there to be Grass types behind a um, Cofagregus, to be completely honest. Gonna go for the Surf for some quick damage. And honestly, Lantern just goes here, and I think Graveler, dude, if Graveler is going to farm. All right, hold up. Hold up. I'm prepared. I am prepared for this. Surf is going to take out Cofagrigus, and in comes Lantern. All right, we're going to find out, ladies and gentlemen, how much those Shadow Stone Edges do, because I have a feeling we're about to start seeing them. Shadow Graveler comes in, starts Volt Switching into this thing, and the opponent throws the Surf right away, and so TD is able to catch it on this Frost last. What a Chad. Going straight in for more Volt Switch action. Gonna opponent is throwing with some terrible timing there. Let's a whole volt switch through. If you're if you're the opponent in that situation, if you're playing against something with volt switch, you want to make sure you're throwing in the middle of that volt switch and not on alignment, because giving that whole move really, really isn't great. The opponent swaps in a frost last. And so TD undercharges it. I think you could probably could have gone for nice and gone for the farm down at least. Or it may be great. I don't know. But for, uh, Rock Blast is gonna come through, and because the opponent has no energy. Stone Edge is going to go. Is this going to be enough to take out a Lantern? Let's find out. You bet it is. That's going to take out Lantern, and that's a good game. Well played. Oh, my goodness. Yep, we're in for a, we're in for a treat, folks. 
Good lead. We get Lantern. Or not Lantern. We get Frostless on the lead against the Dragonair. There's a Lantern. So Lantern is really awkward and it's on like every team. The problem with Lantern is because of Surf. You kind of have to just stay in here and hope that it doesn't just get locked on the old Graveler somehow. Which, I mean, this is fine because that... Dragonair is really not going to appreciate having rocks thrown its way. And here comes Graveler, speaking of rocks. Also, I hope you all like that intro. I'm wearing my, uh, my wife got me this shirt. So if you can't see it because the camera is so tiny, it says zero days since my last dad joke, which is going to be something. I should wear this every day because literally make a dad joke at least once a day. All right. Here comes Dragonair. We're resisting electric damage for the dragon typing, but those rocks are so... They're so fearful. He doesn't even shield. He could have gone for that Stone Edge. That would have probably one-shot the Dragonair, dude. <laughs> We're going to let this go. Lantern is probably looking pretty good here. Um, Frostlass can come in and hopefully farm down. Lickitung is going to be able to come in here and nail. This is really awkward because they have Power Whip. Ew, not so good here. Going to go for a Avalanche Bait, hoping that the opponent tries to shield, which they do. Or not, that's Avalanche Bait. What am I thinking? They go Avalanche in the way to throw Shadow Ball. I thought for some reason we were dealing with uh, Lantern for some reason still. So they go for the Body Slam. Almost takes out the Frost Last, but leaves it with 1 HP. And all of its dreams have been passed on to this Lantern as the Lantern's going to go straight Surf. And they shield the Surf, which is great. Best case scenario, shield a Power Whip. Opponent goes for the Power Whip. And now we're going to be able to go for this Thunderbolt immediately. But instead of going for it immediately, the Dragonair comes in. And so TD is made. It has to make a very difficult decision to throw the Surf into the Dragonair and try to Thunderbolt the Lickitung in a moment. Now, the only way we win this game, only way he's going to win, ladies and gentlemen, is by catching a move. And look what he does. He doesn't catch the move. The opponent licks him down, and unfortunately, the power whip is going to come through. I hyped that up, and <laughs> it just... That did not go the way I hoped it would. But the opponent doesn't take out with the Power Whip. Power Whip leaves Lantern with a shriveled little mess of its HP bar. But Thunderbolt's going to take out the opponent's Lickitung, and that's a good game. No catch doesn't matter. Lantern is goaded. Coming into the next game here, we've got Jellison on the lead versus Frostless. Not a great matchup, but at least I believe the Frostless outpaces, which is nice. But immediately swapping him to Electric Types makes more sense. Now, the opponent... Swaps in a Cradilly. It's a grass type. So thankfully, this is now not going to have to see the lantern. And those stone edges hurt, dude. The opponent also is now forced to shield. Look how angry he is. He's just so angry. Look at that angry little boulder. Opponent's going to overfarm by a ton of energy. They're going to hope to try and land a rock slide against the Frostlass here. Frostlass doing super effective damage. Could farm this down. But so TD's shielding? Interesting. We're shielding both moves, looking for a farm down here, potentially. No, go straight for a Rock Blast here. Um, missed a couple bubbles, doesn't matter. It says do more than enough damage. The opponent also shields. Interesting. Going straight for a move. Now, I wonder... I don't think it would have made a difference here. Not going for the move right away. They definitely know that they can go for that Rock Slide, but shields down is really good here, especially when we have a Frost Last involved. Can go straight for the Shadow Ball if we wanted to, but the opponent has an Abomin Snow, and that's just painful. They're going to have to go straight for this energy ball, and I have a feeling this probably KOs. But now, thanks to that... Oh, it doesn't even quite KO. That means the opponent's going to get a nasty little farm down. you got to hope that they don't get... No, they're not... Okay, not a little. Not really. It's like two. It's, they're going to get like two. We're going to go for the surface some chip damage. It's basically, what Sotiti has to do at this point is he's got to be able to come out of this matchup with enough energy to throw a Shadow Ball into that Jellicent. Now, his hope here is that the, sh the Energy Ball doesn't KO. Does it? No. It leaves this thing hanging with 1 HP, and now we get a team's message, but the Shadow Ball is going to come through, and it doesn't matter. That Shadow Ball should do enough damage to take out this Jellicent. Hopefully, takes out the Jellicent. That's going to be a good game. Going into the next battle here, we've got Dunsparce on the lead. A complete core breaker. This team is left in shambles at the sight of Dunsparce. But, so TD is not afraid. He's going to go straight for the over farm there. Going to not throw the avalanche quite yet. Opponent maybe wants to swap out. No, they probably don't want to swap out of this. Especially not with that much energy. Look at the majestic looking swiping of this person. Goodness, that's beautiful. Goes for the avalanche. Nope. Going to catch a move. Rock slide? Caught the rock slide on the grab. We're very nice. Opponent doesn't go for drill run there. If I you know, and, and now, and this is just, a, this is just a small aside. If you are the opponent in that situation, and you know 
that the rock slide is like if you know a drill runs enough you could go for just drill run as drill run does do more neutral damage overall but as well you're also getting yourself a point where if you had decided if the opponent decides to try and catch a move you just completely catch them off guard so in that situation yeah going for drill run in the opponent side like rock slide is nice but drill runs enough to ko you might as well go for the move that could potentially um work out in your favor that way so Graveler's going to go down. The opponent clearly doesn't have a grass type in the back. If their best response is a Toxapex, then there's the Jellicent to say hello. Now, here's the thing. We're down a shield in this situation, so Lantern is going to have to make some quick work of this Jellicent shield. Goes for the Thunderbolt. Jellicent shields it up, unfortunately. Do we shield or call a bait here? Going to shield the Shadow Ball correctly. That's going to be a huge shield. Going for the good timing. Going to go for the Surf Bait before the opponent has a chance to swap out. I'm not sure if their timer's up yet or even if they have another. No, they do. Okay. So, oh my goodness. Catches another move in the same game. Going to catch that Shadow Ball on the Frost Slash. That's going to lock up and seal the fate of this opponent. Easily can over farm here in order to make sure that the opponent's catch is, used to, is useless. And that's going to be a good game. Well played going into this next battle here against a was that person legend already goodness gracious all right so this person's got a lantern on the lead they're gonna go and continue farming they know that they win this matchup there's no reason for them to really swap out some more majestic swiping by our buddy sotiti and frostless is gonna land a shadow ball on the uh my goodness my brain is already going on the lantern that's a lantern me that's a lantern can stay in this matchup for just a bit try and catch that surf once again and you know what I've noticed this trainer is something that I bring up on this channel occasionally. Consistency. This trainer hits some really weird leads, you know, Lantern. He probably plays the Dunsparce out every time the same way as well. When you find something that works, do it the same way every time until it doesn't work anymore. Because the more times you're able to do it the same way, right? the more easily it's going to come to you. You can focus on other things. So this person's Metacham is going to just start punching this lantern and i mean the surfs are enough you go for double surf here you're going to force a shield off the opponent and if they decide to give up switch that's okay too looks like the graveler is poised for a good swap or a good sweep here hopefully eliminating the only fighter on the opponent's team power up punch is not going to ko them but the counters afterwards will and Frostless comes in with a farm down. I think that they, you could just let this go. It's a power up punch. No, it's a psychic. That hurts so much, but it's okay. Those counters start ripping through. But let's see. The opponent's got a Rangaroo in the back. Let's see if how. Oh my goodness, this matchup is going to be terrible. I don't think you know when they even catch the move. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, this is that. That was definitely not what we wanted to see happen. Going to have to shield once. Go farm all the way down here and just hope that the opponent doesn't have a move yet and shields and then takes the stone edge i think that's about all you can really hope for at this point and i don't even know if you can have those back-to-back -back moves but you're gonna go straight for the stone edge he's not messing around he's like hopefully you don't call this bait because if you do you're dead and the opponent does shield the move so also i don't believe you can have those back-to-back -back. so there would have been one more move had to be thrown there heartbreaking loss unfortunately but good game nonetheless very well played by both trainers we're going to get into this next battle here. Frost Slash, Mirror Lead. This is really awkward, but I imagine you could probably safe swap into Graveler right away here. Not to play this out. And the opponent's staying in to try and get some moves in. But now we're going to go for the over farm here. And the opponent stays in even longer to let Sotiti get to a move here. Rock Blast is going to force an early shield off the Frost Slash. And I think you just shield right back. Yeah, you definitely just shield right back here. Opponent doesn't seem like they have an answer in the back. They come with a lick of tongue, and unfortunately, this Graveler's got so much energy that it's just going to start slinging rocks and stones and very sharp, pointy stones. Look how much damage that does, dude. I really wish I had a Shadow Lone Graveler. This thing looks like so much fun to play. If you take something with, like, no bulk, and you give it 20% more attack, and it's just destruct it's so destructive. So, uh, going to let this go. Power Whip is going to take out our poor little Graveler there, but the farm down is going to happen from the Frost Slash. I'm pretty sure their Frost Slash is still ahead on energy, though. So, immediately, we're going to cover it with the Lantern, and I'm already starting to oh, no, the, the battles are exciting, don't get me wrong, but, man, I record these late at night on Saturday, typically, and I'm going to... The, the later in the week we get, the sleepier you're going to see me be... <laughs> 
<laughs> so surf is going to come through and it's going to take out most of that um frost last but we've got the greedon coming in do we are we going to be able to catch a body slam on this uh frost last at some point no probably not we're hoping that the opponent goes straight for it body slam is not going to take out lantern here going to be able to go straight for a move but this bullet seed might be enough to ko surf does not get the shield off the opponent, but we're gonna throw back-to-back -back serves, trying to hopefully get another one off. Dude, he's just so he's just so magical with with the, with the with the swiping. Okay, so do we no shield? I think we no shield the crunch here, regardless. Oh, we shield the crunch. Big move. Okay, I would have been afraid of a defense debuff, but now we can farm all the way down. Even though this is a crunch, the farm down here is huge because that their their frost last is definitely not at a move yet, but. Oh, that's tough because you've already shielded. The opponent still got a shield. This isn't looking good, folks. Opponent doesn't shield, but they get to a move. That's it. Unless this is a body slam and it doesn't take out the frost. Us. Nope, it's a crunch. Ah, oh, it sucks. That's a good game. Well played. Unfortunate. Going into the next game here. We're going to have Frost Us on the lead versus Altari. You couldn't ask for a better lead. You've got a really strong answer as well in the back. And then your opponent swaps in a Quagsire. And suddenly Sotiti is left in shambles. It's his poor Frost Lass has to deal with this Quagsire all by itself. Well, the opponent shields the early Avalanche. Let's see what Sotiti does in this game here. Quagsire's got... I mean, it's got to be Stone Edge, right? That, that can't not be Stone Oh, it's Stone Edge. Oh, it's so painful. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, I felt that in my soul, dude. But because they've got the new buffed Mud Bomb, this is going to be a very difficult game. I don't know how he comes back from this, to be honest. This 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 looks really bad. I imagine that they're maybe they're double weak now with what they've got left to the Graveler, and we sweep. That's the hope, anyway. So hopefully the opponent decides not to invest any more shields into this uh, into this Quagsire. There, I mean, there's, there's Altaria is like the Altaria has no more of a thing to fear. The Frostlass is gone, or does it? Let's see. So Mud Bomb does take out Graveler is taking double super effective damage. He just quits. He's done. All right. You know what? Fair enough. Well played. I don't think you could get. I don't think there was any way to get a Ground Quag Sire. What, he was hoping for a bait on that Stone Edge he let through. That's all that you could really do. We've got another Dunsparce here. So we're going to see probably the same thing over farm by just a bit. The opponent's throwing with bad timing here, allowing for a full powder, a powder snow to get through. We're going to see a rock slide come through. So TD's going to respond by throwing an avalanche on good timing here. And afterwards, probably going to see him try to catch the move. Yep, he's going to catch the move again. Rock slide. Again, if you're the opponent, go for that drill run. If your opponent would get taken out by the drill run, just go for it because them catching that move is bad but then they come in with a meta jam and oh my goodness that's pain that is painful dude the hardest of hard counters but they sh they shield the rock blast man all right that's a new one on me all right so we're gonna come in here with the frost last and go immediately for this avalanche and just trust in lantern to do its thing well, the opponents <laughs> they're putting everything in this meta jam right now everything I think you shield the potential psychic. Yeah, you're definitely going to shield up this psychic and hopefully not. Yep, that's a psychic that gets shielded. It's a great shield right there. Uh, Thunderbolt may not be enough to take out this Metacham, but at another psychic already forces the Amethyst shield off of Sotiti's final Pokemon on his Lantern here. Going to overfarm by a little bit here. Goes for the Surf. Thunsparce catches the Surf. This this feels this feels kind of bad. How how do we win this game? How how do we win this game? Because now I'm invested. I mean, I've been invested since we started, but you're going to go for the Thunderbolt, hopefully right before they get to the Psychic. You're just kind of hoping at this point that Thunderbolt one-shots whatever's in the back. Takes out that Metachamp. Frostlass cannot one-shot here, and will get outpaced the two moves. Is this Surf going to be enough? Because the Shadow Ball is almost enough. That's gonna, this is going to be a close one. Hold on. All right. Shadow Ball comes through, leaves that poor little Lantern at a sliver of HP. Going to go for the first Surf. Is two Surfs going to be enough? Surf 1 comes through. It's not going to be enough, but get to the Thunderbolt at the last second before getting farmed down. Thunderbolt's going to take it out and get an honorary from me, and that's a good game. Well played. Oh my goodness. That was that was something. All right. Whew. Frostlass into Cresselia. You get a good lead here, you take it. Cresselia does not appreciate seeing Frostlass, and the opponent comes in with a Lickitung immediately. Not really seeing a great counter swap here off the cuff, so we're going to have to go for an Avalanche here in order to do some chip damage to it. And then we're going to come in with a Graveler, it looks like, and that's going to be able to go for a Rock Blast immediately. Shield once, I imagine, not to take the Power Whip. 
go for a little bit of extra farm and start throwing rock blasts off here and you've already got um, a good amount of energy to hit back this Cresselia when it comes back in. Dude has over farmed so far past the comfortable amount. I would have been done it too, I think. But you know what? That's why he's submitting the battles and I'm not playing right now. That's it. So, Stone Edge hits that Cresselia for over half of its HP. Dude, that was a lot of damage, man. At this point, I would be like, no, I'm letting, I'm letting Golem sweep this whole team. So, <laughs> opponent gets the Grass Knot off and with two shields on the opponent's side to one shield on Sotiti's side. He's just going to go straight surf with his Lantern. This is still a good matchup. They still require two Shadow Balls in order to take out to take out this Lantern, but Frostlass is going to have to put in some extra work here in order to make this work. The final shield is spent before the opponent has even spent one on the Shadow Ball correctly, thankfully. That was not an avalanche bait. Lantern is going to be able to get both of these surfs off and is going to be able to strip both shields off the opponent. I believe Lantern or Frostlass has some energy, so if we can see some good energy management here by Sotiti, we might just see a Frostlass come through and sweep this game, and that's what Frostlass does best, ladies and gentlemen. It sweeps games. So we're going to see the avalanche potentially get caught here, I think. Oh, they both simultaneously swap. Oh, this is too much for my heart. This is too much for me, man. All right. We're going to see the opponent's Cresselia get to... Cresselia? Cresselia get to a Moonblast here. We're going to overfarm like mad, get to two Avalanches. The Avalanche should be enough. Does so tease? Frostless wins CMP. It doesn't matter because the opponent is forced to throw on CMP or they lose. And then the Lantern has the move ready to go. That was an excellent ex execution of an end game by Sotiti. Very well done. Very, very good gameplay there. Wow. That was impressive. That was impressive. Frostlice into Lantern, another terrible lead, but we're going to be probably seeing the same thing where we see him go for the Shadow Ball and catch that Surf on his Lantern. So let's see what happens here. Opponent is going to go for the move right away, looking for that over farm. Yep, Opponent goes for Surf. I promise I'm not falling asleep. My body's just involuntarily going and it's terrible. I'm not ready to sleep. I've got more videos to record. Lantern's going to come in now. And they're just going to have to throw a move. And they go for the Thunderbolt, doing for that chip damage. That's fine and dandy. But the opponent now has a troll. <laughs> They've got a dragon there that can just farm down this whole Lantern by resisting its entire move set. You know what I would like to see? Lantern with Ice Beam. You know why I'd like to see it? Because at least we have some way for Lantern not to be purely an RPS Pokemon. Right? And I think, I personally, just a little rant, a little, little side here. I personally think that every Pokemon in this game should have at least one coverage move for its main weaknesses. Lantern gets Ice Beam, for example. You know, if Metacham's got Ice Punch for Flyers, why can't Lantern have Ice Beam for Grass types and Dragon types? I don't see why not. Or give it something, you know? Anyway, Frostlass is going to get that farm down, and Lickitung's going to come in, but the, the Lickitung's not going to have enough shields to deal with all this. Graveler can go straight for Rock Blast here. Opponent tries to catch on the Lantern and successfully does so, but that Rock Blast is going to almost KO, allows Sotiti to get an extra Volt Switch through to put him back in the game with some energy, and honestly, I think you just go straight Rock Blast to the Shields are gone. The opponent wants to try and call a bait. That's fine. That's still a ton of damage that they're going to have to just eat. So two shields are going to go through the opponent, likely bait you with a body slam. They don't need to go for power whip because by the time this matchup is over through the two shields, there's enough lick damage that that body slam would KO anyway. So going for the stone edge, hoping to get the bait call and he gets it. What a giga chad. Volt switch goes through shields once, damage registers. That's a good game. The opponent in shambles after trying to call that bait and doesn't get it. Wow. Man, that was great. All right, last, I think this is the last game, yo. Anyway, Aurorus in the lead. This is pretty miserable. And uh, just a quick note before we uh, finish up this last battle. If anybody here watching would like to send me some battles to have shoutcasted, absolutely would love to do it. There's a form in the uh, description for a uh, Google form. There's a link to a form in the description. You can far, or you can, oh my goodness, my brain is gone. I should sleep, but I probably should. There is a form in the description and the pinned comment that you can fill out and i will get it 
and I can shout cast the battles if you send them my way, if I've got the availability to do so. There we go. We got to the end of it. Thank goodness. All right. And so TD is also part of my patron community. Awesome place to be. If you're looking to improve it, go Battle League and Pokemon Go PvP in general. We've got a lot of resources and a lot of wonderful people in that Discord to get you the assistance and advice you need to level up, not only for myself, but some other great battlers in there as well. And you can find that in the link to you could find the link to that in the description of the pinned comment. And after this battle or so about, a little link will appear underneath me here. You can also uh, you can also check that out. And if you're looking for coaching, I also offer that on Medify. Won't go too far into that. We've already done that three times this week, so we'll just leave it at that. Opponent's got a Medicham in the back, and you've got a shield. You've got your Lantern. Easily gets to the <clears throat> Lantern easily. Let me chill, man. man. Missed half the battle. Anyway, opponent's Aurorus comes in, and are they... That's not a what? That's not a meteor beam, is it? There's no way. He goes a meteor beam. He goes for the meteor beam. Uh, a couple of surfs should definitely be able to take this out. But what we need to do here is we need to be able to grab the energy to get to that thunderbolt against the opponents. Yeah, you got to go for the surf right away. You don't have a choice. Uh, we want to get that thunderbolt off against the Metacham to take it out. So cancel TD. Get to them. Oh, he's gonna go for the surf. Is the surf enough? You know what? We've all played enough greatly. Like, we know this is enough damage. Surf's gonna go through. Claps the Metacham out of here. That's gonna be a good game. Well played. And that's gonna do it for this battle. Thank you all so much for watching again. So TD from um, he's, on, he's on the Barktown Boomers in the faction. If uh, you know, I know factions is basically over, but if y'all follow that team, awesome dude, and also awesome player. So thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.